Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to try to use this old wreath form that I found at Goodwill. It's in bad shape, but we're going to try to recycle it. Some wooden beads, both small and large, some twine, some white tulle from Hobby Lobby, a small cross I found at Goodwill, but I've also seen these at Hobby Lobby, some florals from my stash, I'm not sure how many I'll be using yet, some floral wire, some twine, some ribbon from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I did was start to work on this wreath form. It was in really bad shape and it was falling apart as I was messing with it, but I wanted to try to recycle it. I didn't want to have to go to town and buy a new wreath form. So I took all of this old greenery out of it and the stems that were left over, and I didn't really like how it was sticking out in all these different directions. So I thought that I would try to tie it down and make it look more like a grapevine wreath. So I took some of this black baker's twine that I had on hand and I tied it around one end of it. And then I just go around the wreath and I push down all those branches and I wrap my twine around it. Now you can see that this was falling apart and I probably should have just given up, but I'm stubborn and I didn't want to have to go into town. So I just kept working at it and I finally did get something that I was able to use. I did try using regular twine with this and floral wire, but they both stood out too starkly against this wreath form. So I found that this black baker's twine that I had on hand worked out perfectly. I just kept going around and around until I got it formed into kind of a circle. And then I take my string and I tie it off to itself and tie it into a double knot. And this actually held it perfectly. Now I'm going to work on my cross just a little bit. I took the sticker off the back of it, even though it was kind of stubborn. <laughs> and I took the twine out of it because this is really just too thick. Now I'm going to take some thinner twine and I thread it onto a large darning needle. I put it through my cross and then I take the other end of the twine and thread it through the darning needle as well. Now I'm going to take four of my small white wooden beads and three of my large wooden beads. These large beads were a natural color and I like that, but for this one I wanted it to be pink. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper Pink. I put my beads onto a skewer to hold them and I gave them a really good coat of paint. Once they were dry, I threaded them onto my twine using the small, the large, the small, the large. Then I tied a knot into the end and trimmed it off. Now we're going to start to work on our wreath. I took some of these beautiful rose picks. I think I got these from the Dollar Tree and I cut them apart and then I just kind of stuck them down in between the branches of this wreath. It's pretty thick through there, so I really didn't have to use any glue to hold this part. Once I got those in there, I cut apart the other set and I stick them going the other way, making sure that I leave a gap in between these because I'm going to be putting a bow there. Now I'm going to take some of these pretty white flowers that I actually got from the thrift store. I'm not sure what they are, but they are so pretty. And I cut them apart and I put one piece up at the top and I did have to use some floral wire to secure this because it kept sticking up. And then I take another piece of it and I put it down at the bottom. Again, I got these at the thrift store, so I'm not sure where they actually came from originally, but I've seen something similar at the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to take some of this baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and I cut one little bunch and stick it in up at the top. And then I cut another small bunch and stick it in at the bottom. I'm going to take a little piece of this burlap and lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and wrap it right there around the middle in that gap that I left and secure it with some hot glue. This is going to cover those stems and it also gives me a base for my bow. I took that white tool from the Hobby Lobby and I cut five pieces at 36 inches long and then I just wrap it right there around the middle of it and tie it into a bow. I love the way this tool looks when you tie it into a bow. 
I take each individual section and I fluff it out and this gives me a nice fluffy bow right there in the center of my wreath. To attach my cross, I take my twine and thread it underneath my bow and then I just use some hot glue to secure it right to my wreath form. And then we just fluff our bow right back out and we are finished with this piece. Well, I actually did add a hanger to this. Somehow I lost the footage for that. I guess my camera may have died. All I did was take a piece of twine, thread it through the branches on the back of the wreath, tie a knot and trim it, and that gave me a little hanger. And there's our finished piece. I really love how this piece turned out. I'm so happy that I was able to recycle that old wreath and I think I actually turned it into something beautiful. I love having this springy piece hanging in my sunroom. Today we are excited to be teaming up with our friends Crafty Leany, White Sparrow Living, and DIY with Nadia for a very special Easter collaboration called Rejoice. If you haven't heard of any of these channels, we hope that you will check them out. Each one is so talented and has a variety of gorgeous DIYs and crafting information. When you finish our video, go over and check out what each lady has created. We will have links to their videos in the description box below. Make sure you tell them we sent you over. Note: YouTube has been having issues with links in the description box. We will also pin a link to their videos in our comment section. If you are new and coming over from another channel in the collab, welcome! We are so happy to have you join us. We release four videos each week. We're sure you can find something you will like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft, y'all! Hey, y'all! This is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these frames that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was marked 90% off. This wooden cross that I got at the Dollar Tree. This sign that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was 40% off. This jute rope that I got at the Dollar Tree. This laminated burlap that I got at Michael's. Some wired jute and some wood toothpicks. This word rejoice that I made on my computer, my embosser, some carbon paper, and a marker, and finally, some super glue fix all adhesive, a furniture repair marker, and also my hot glue gun. First thing I'm going to do is go in and remove this bottom stand that is on the words He is Risen. I'm using my heat tool and I'm just going to get the glue to release a little bit and then I will use my Cricut tools and pry it apart. And then I'm also going to use my heat tool and I'm going to release this hanger that's on the back and just remove that. I won't need it. And then I'll remove the stickers on the back as well. And then I'm going in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint the outside frame. I'm going to paint the front and all of the edges and also the inside part. It won't matter that I get it on this backing because we're going to cover that with our burlap. I put a little wood putty in the hole at the top of my cross and then I'm taking this furniture repair marker in the color oak and I'm going to stain the edges and the front of my cross as well. I'm just laying my burlap down on three of my edges and I'm going to draw a line around it so that I can cut that part out. It won't reach all the way across on one side but that's okay because we're going to use the jute rope to cover that up as well. I used my super glue fix all adhesive and just spread it across my frame here and that's how I'm going to attach my burlap. Once I got it placed down on my frame, I put a heavy book on it and I let it dry overnight. I have laid down my two wood pieces to kind of see where I want them to go and now I'm taping down the words rejoice. I'm going to use my carbon paper and just trace that out by pushing down really hard with my embossing tool. And now I'm just using my Jot permanent marker and I'm going to trace over the word rejoice. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is take some hot glue and I'm going to cut my rope into four pieces and I'm going to glue it down around my frame one piece at the time. And now let's start finishing off our words. I'm going to paint, first of all, the He is Risen in my black chalk paint. It's Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And now I'm just going to cut off a piece of this wire jute rope. And I'm going to twist it into a circle and glue it together with my hot glue. And we're going to construct a crown of thorns. I'm going to use toothpicks and I'm going to put them in randomly and then cut off the excess. And then I'll take another toothpick and I'm going to seal off those inside edges of the toothpicks so that they don't slide out again. And then we'll just glue it down to our cross. Now I'm going to take one of these cheap paint brushes, a disposable one, and I'm going to take my Waverly white chalk paint and go in and distress the words he has risen. I kind of want them to look like stone. So I just go in and randomly apply a little more in some places, a little less in others, and distress this word. I'm just going to use a little hot glue and secure the words to the middle bottom of my frame. He is risen. And then I will glue on the cross at an angle and put on the crown of thorns. And there's our completed sign. I really love have this hanging in my home and it always will remind me of the true meaning for Easter. We are so excited to announce that we were chosen as part of the top 10 for the new contest that is being hosted by Heidi Sambel. Starting March 5th, 2021, we will be competing for the title of Creative Champion with nine other talented channels. We hope that you will join us in our journey and help us stay in the competition as long as possible with your vote. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these 8x10 frameless photo frames from the Dollar Tree, some wording I printed from the computer, four 5-gallon paint stirrer sticks, a furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree, a Sharpie oil-based paint pen, some white chalk paint, some twine, my 4-inch table saw from Harbor Freight, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I did was measure this one paint stirrer stick and it was the perfect length already, 11 and a half inches. So I mark my other three sticks and we're going to take them outside and cut them down with our little mini table saw. Now that I have them marked, we are going to use our table saw and cut these down. We get a lot of questions about this little table saw. Kay and I both have one. We got them from Harbor Freight and we love them so much. It's so much easier to cut down these small pieces of wood than trying to use um, a box cutter or some scissors. You can see that it cuts through really easily. You do have to be careful with it because it is a mini saw and you could burn it up if you weren't. Now that I have my wood cut down, I'm going to use my furniture repair marker and give it all a good coat of stain. I'm using the mahogany in this. I really don't care for the mahogany. I normally prefer the walnut color, but I have a lot of these left over because I buy the packs and I use the walnut and the black. And then I have all these mahogany markers left over. So I thought for this project that it would work out fine, especially since I'm going to be distressing it with some white paint. I make sure that I cover the front, the back, and all the sides and don't leave any of the natural wood still showing. 
Once I finish with my staining, I take my white chalk paint and my chippy brush and I go over this with a really heavy hand and give it a good distressing. I just want a little bit of my stain to show through, not a whole lot. Now we're going to take our frame apart. The only part of this that we want is the glass. And then I take my glass and I center it over the wording that I printed out from my computer. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie oil-based marker and I'm going to trace over my wording. I'm not sure if you could use a regular Sharpie for this. You may be able to, and if you've used a regular Sharpie on glass, let me know down below. But I had this oil-based paint pen and it is perfect for writing on glass with. I like doing this kind of project because you can see your letters and it's so easy to trace over them. Now to put this together, we're going to take two of our paint stirrer sticks and turn them paint side down. I'm going to take a piece of twine and measure it out to fit right in between there and I flood both ends with my hot glue and then cover them with paper tape and this actually gives this a really strong bond. Now I'm going to center my piece of glass in between the edges of my top paint stirrer stick, making sure this is even on both sides. And then I just use some hot glue right in there and attach my glass right to that paint stirrer stick. Now we'll do the same thing at the bottom. We center it up and then we'll use a little bit of hot glue in there or actually a lot of hot glue and glue it right down. Now we're going to take the other two paint stirrer sticks and we're just going to sandwich our glass right in between using hot glue to secure this to it. And there's our finished piece. This is such a simple piece to make, but I truly love how it turns out. I think this piece fits perfectly into my gallery wall. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!